Hello and welcome to One and All. What I'm going to do in this video is introduce you to audience targeting within SharePoint 2010. Now this is a very clever, very powerful tool. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. There's two things I'm going to do with audience targeting. One is to show you how we can use it to display or hide lists and the other one is to show you how to work with individual items. So let me give you some background about this site collection that I'm looking to modify and design. I have a, a site collection called STARS. STARS stands for SharePoint Training and Resources. It's a site collection with many subsites breaking down uh, into different environments where users can come and learn about SharePoint and use different areas to improve their skills. So this top site is a general site where they can look at overall information. I have other subsites. Uh, in particular, I have one called the Training Site which I've just started to build. As you can see, it looks like a typical team site at the moment. I haven't modified it. But I have a tasks list in here that will appoint tasks to be completed to my particular team of users who are responsible for beefing up this site collection with me. So I call that group Stars Champions. And Amanda Harris is a member of that group. She's just appointed herself in control of one of these tasks. She's claimed that task for her to do personally. If I go to the Navigate Up, you can see that training is a subsite of STARS. Now, there's relevance to that, as you'll see later on. But for the moment, let's just concentrate on this STARS top level site and the tasks list I have in there, which is for tasks to generally beef up the STARS site. And I've got three tasks in there. Now, if you, if you don't know, just introduce you to the my tasks that's there by default it's a clever little view it shows only the tasks that you are assigned to so your account is actually assigned to rather than the group you belong to and so on uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that person's tasks in the resources corner so I'm going to edit the page I'm going to insert a web part and it's pointing to that tasks list. Now all the tasks that go in there are always assigned to my stars champions or to my stars owners groups. But what I want to do is make sure that people are only looking at the tasks they have claimed or have been appointed to them directly. So I'm going to edit the uh, web part, change the appearance so the title says my tasks there we go, and also change the view so that it is using the My Tasks view. If I click on OK, now as you saw, I don't have any tasks assigned to me. The downside is though, I still see this empty box, which means even users that aren't within any of those groups that the task list was built for, they will see that web part in there and is not relevant to them. So this is where audience targeting comes in. I want to make sure that web part is only visible to the people that will ever have at any point tasks in that list. So I'm going to go into the edit web part again. I will go to my advanced section in my web part properties down the right hand side and at the bottom of the advanced section is my target audiences. Now target audiences are SharePoint groups and even security groups and distribution groups that have been created. So it's not just for SharePoint groups that you create for your sites and site collections. You can grab groups that have been built in the Active Directory and that has some great advantages. Now I have, for example, several groups in my directory. One is sales and marketing. So if any new member of staff comes along who is in the sales, I don't have to add them to any groups in my SharePoint. If they're in a security group straight away, I can make content immediately available to them on this home page. As it is, I'm going to choose two of my STARS SharePoint groups. So the owners, which I have by default, but also my champions. And I know that my tasks will only ever be assigned to users within those groups or the groups themselves. Click OK on the web part properties. There is a task list. I'll save and close the page. Again, I'm a member of both those groups. I don't have any tasks assigned to me, but I can see that as, as I can see that I don't have anything outstanding. But other users who are not belonging to those groups 
if I switch to one of my other accounts, such as a, a student account, I know it doesn't belong to any of those groups, they don't see that web part at all. So I can customize my entire page and make the information relevant to whoever is looking at it. Now, there are some pitfalls to that. One, what if I wanted to see all the tasks assigned to my groups that I belong to? B, what if I want to see tasks that have been assigned directly to or claimed by any of my colleagues? I may know that a colleague is away and I, even though I'm not assigned to it, I might want to see what they're scheduled to do. And C, I might want to see all the tasks that my team are responsible for from multiple task lists in multiple sites. This is where audience targeting can really come into itself. What I need to do is go into each task list, for example, go into the list settings, and inside the list settings, I have this audience targeting settings. Now it's a page with just a tick box, and I'll click OK. And now I have a target audiences. I'm going to repeat that for my task list in my subsite. So they're now both enabled. Now what does that mean? What it means is if I create any tasks or edit any existing tasks, what I'll now see in the properties is a target audience. In other words, who do I want to display this task to? Not necessarily who's responsible, but who should be able to look at it and be able to review uh, the task itself. So in that respect, I say this is available to anyone who's in the STARS champions and in the STARS owners. Okay, I'm going to cheat here, I'm going to copy those two group names so I can amend them inside a number of items. I'm now going to do the same thing in my parent task list. So in the same respect, I've already turned the audience targeting on. All I'm going to do is go in there and edit the items. One of them I'm going to leave empty. I'm not going to assign anything to it. And the other one, I'm only going to assign this to my owners. My champions are not responsible for this particular task. OK, so how does this work? Well, in order to do this, I have to use a special web part called the Content Query web part. Now, the Content Query web part is only available when a certain site collection feature has been enabled. So, I'm going to go to my site actions, site settings, and I'm at the top level of my site collection so I can see all the site collection administration commands, and one of those is the site collection features. Now, if you don't have access to this, you can still go to your site collection administrator and inquire if this particular feature is active. And in particular is the SharePoint server publishing infrastructure. As you can see, mine is already active. Going to now go back into that resources corner page, edit the page, and I'm going to add a new web part that is referring to the champions tasks. So I'm going to insert web part and this content query web part is stored inside a folder called the content rollup and there it is. Give that a click and click add. Now this is a powerful web part it can do so much, it can pull data from so many other places besides lists, it can pull data from queries, uh, it can pull data from Excel data, Excel services, SQL server based data and so on. So respectively that means that this web part at the moment is not bound to any data source at all. I'll have to click on the drop down arrow, edit the web part and tell it what data source I want it to connect to. So first thing I want to do is expand the query section 
and I can tell it I want to show the items from all the sites in this collection where the items are in this case tasks so that's going to pull up all the data from all my tasks from all my subsites and this site included I can choose data from those tasks based on content types. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep this nice and simple. But this is upon the, the idea of being able to use audience targeting and audience filtering. So I scroll down and now I've got this presentation. What do I want to display in this content query? And again, this is a very powerful tool. I can use so many different clever things. For this, I'm going to keep it very simple and I'm going to choose a default style to group and I'm going to choose the title only I'm not going to go back to just the title only now these normally are based on your base columns that you have within your site collections so title location description and, and fields like that are acceptable be careful some that it explains can be are not actually in fact available so it gives me a link telling me that this is the list of all the columns that I can use but for example um, the start date is not really a column that I can do out of the box to the content query however if I've got certain tools like SharePoint Designer or Visual Studio I really can pull it up custom columns from my lists and libraries but that'll do all I've got to do now is just click OK and that is now pulling up the data from all of my tasks. I have three tasks in this site and I had two tasks in the subsite. One's missing. That's because one of them was made empty. I didn't assign it to any audience. So by default if it's not assigned to, to an audience that I'm included in it doesn't display it. Well if they're not assigned to an audience I'd like everybody to see them so in that respect I'm going to say include items that are not targeted if I click on OK all five items are now displayed inside my web part now I don't know if you notice I had an error in that web part properties let me quickly show you what that is it's, that happens from time to time the error occurs and I don't know if you'll ever get this but if you do the likeliness is I found it sometimes has a field inside the link called the URL path. Now the field as it shows in the column here is actually just called URL but I find it much better if you just delete the entire field. The link will then automatically be created for you when it's finished. So if I click on OK I don't lose the link I can still click on any one of the items as you can see, you see that yellow tooltip that appears below my mouse? There it is showing the link automatically. So if I save and close my page, I've now got a list of all the tasks. And the idea is that if I click on any one of these task names, no matter which task list it's in, regardless of which site it's in as well, if I click it, it takes me straight to the properties of that task. Now that's taken me to the train site, the training site, the sub site below this one. I'm thinking, oh, it's, it's taking me out of my site now. But if I click close, it actually takes you straight back to the previous page. So it's a great way of making sure that your team of users can see exactly what duties they've got as they go in the morning to their page and they can keep track of the activities and the details. And that's one of the great little features, one of the many advantages of using audience targeting.